Romance is not for everyone? Omar Suleiman, in part of his Ramadan series, comes up with a video where he has the most god-awful advice I've ever seen for Muslims. He basically tells them that, hey, it's not destined for you, it's not destined for you. Don't worry about it. Allah got your back in Jannah, but not here. Let's take a look, let's see what he has to say, and you'll see just why I had to do a response to this video. Let's get into it. So here we have Sheikh Omar Suleiman with Will I Ever Find True Love? Let's listen to the introduction. Is there such a thing as love at first sight? What about true love? A lot of us grow up reading fairy tales with magical encounters and happy endings. But are those things written to come true for you in this life? And if you don't find that relationship here, what does that say about your divine decree? So cue the music, the fancy music, and let's get into it. This guy is trying to say, is it possible that it's not in your divine decree? Is it possible that the love that you're so craving, the intimacy, the companionship, right? Is it possible that it's just not meant to be? He's literally telling people that, hey, don't feel bad because maybe Allah wants you to be single. It's also based on your destiny. Your love story was written by Allah in the heavens before you both even came to this world. He's saying your love story, love story that might not exist. But anyways, let's get to the meat of the content. But with all of that being said, two people can seem like a perfect fit and can have all the same passions and want to do everything right. But for some reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just didn't want it to happen in this dunya. And being attached to a person or the idea of a person can be incredibly intoxicating or debilitating. Romance is just like risk. It's not something everyone is going to have in this dunya. And we are to be content with what Allah has decreed, even if that means I have to wait for my spouse in Jannah where the Prophet wasallam said, Laysa fil jannati No one is going to be single in Jannah. Whoa. So according to this sheikh, this imam, this like really popular Imam that has Yaqeen Institute's resources behind him. He's literally telling people to just give up and just accept being single. Because no one is going to be single in Jannah. Because risk is not something everyone will get. Meaning, you might be destined to be single forever. And this is what he's telling you to be to accept. Does that sound like good advice? Can you imagine going to a therapist, right? And talking to this person and saying, I'm lonely, I'm depressed, I'm sad. I don't think I'm ever going to find someone. And in fact, you know, people like myself that have been through a divorce, you, you go through a phase like that where you think, maybe I'll just be single forever. Maybe I'll never find someone again, right? Because you wonder, right? It, that Those thoughts go through your head. And looking at the comments on this channel, there's a lot of women actually saying that this was, you know, they were, they were crying when they watched this. I'm crying because I know in this dunya, I will never be blessed enough or have enough luck to meet a good person and get married and stay married for a while. I gave up on this broken dream of mine. You see, this just shows you that this type of content actually reaffirms people's cognitive distortions. Imagine if I went to talk to someone after I got divorced and they told me, you'll never find someone, don't worry about it. Or maybe it's okay if you don't find someone, right? This is the actual opposite of what you should be saying to hopeless people. You should be encouraging them, giving them hope, not being fatalistic about it. Right? Some of them say, oh, I feel better now. But like, 
this is a real thing, right? And what is this imam doing? He's giving them God awful advice. He's telling them, just accept one day when you after you're dead, right? At that point, you'll have a spouse. Do you think a therapist would ever say that to you? Like uh, someone that actually is trained on how to help people? Do you think that teaching people that to just accept being single is going to lead to good outcomes for them? Do you really think that's helping people, Sheikh Omar and Suleiman? Right? What would be good advice? What's an example of what? First of all, don't lose hope. Never lose hope, right? Keep trying. Don't give up. These are the things he should be saying at the minimum. Second of all, take some steps to make it happen. Talk to friends, talk to family, talk to the imams. Well, not imams like him because he's going to tell you just forget about it, man. This guy that is obviously married, right? And he's fine, doing well, but he's telling other people that are single, yeah, just don't worry about it, Muslims. You'll be okay in the next life, right? And the video gets even worse. We didn't even get to that part. But like, what about telling them to socialize? What about telling them to go out? Now again, in Islam, you can't mix, right? According to like, if you follow Islam properly, you're not supposed to mix with women. So how are you supposed to meet women? Well, I guess you have to meet the brothers, assuming they have brothers or uncles or fathers, and you have to go through them. So that's already like an awkward situation, right? But he's an imam. He has a lot of power and money, right? Yakin Institute gets millions of dollars in donations, right? And this is the, the crap they put out. Shouldn't they be setting up a system to help Muslims get married? Single women, divorced women, widowed women, or even just regular, or even men, right? That need to get married, right? Men that are struggling. Shouldn't he be creating a system for them? Shouldn't he be investing some of those millions of dollars of donations into helping Muslims, you know, get into relationships. How is this, how is it possible that he's saying this, right? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share one of the comments on the Instagram version of this video. This video really didn't hit home for me. So instead of strengthening someone's heart by saying Allah has better plans for you, he's telling people think of your imaginary partner in Jannah. There are better ways to help people dealing with hopelessness in this area of life. In this, in this area of their lives, and this is definitely not, right? And then again, like if you read some of the other comments, like I was saying earlier, this episode just made me cry. Qadr it is. People around me always say, go get married. And I told them I'd rather wait for the Qadr of Allah instead. So yeah, still single at 39 and Alhamdulillah, right? Another comment, and I think these are women. Not gonna lie, it made me quite sad realizing that having a spouse in this dunya may not be written for me and maybe why I haven't been able to find my person. Either way, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned for me will be the best. She's saying that maybe the reason I can't find someone is because it wasn't meant to be and it's, it's written for me to be single. Imagine how horrible that is to think that. To think that you are single because God wants you to be single. Not because you didn't, it just didn't happen yet, or you just need to find the right way to make it happen. No, it's because God wanted you to be single. Imagine how toxic and like, what? How, just, just a horrible thing to tell people, right? Omar Suleiman is doing a bad job here, right? This, this imam that's supposed to be progressive and actually helpful, like he's, this is like the worst thing ever. Let's continue and let's see just how, how much worse it gets. Something everyone is going to have in this dunya. And we are to be content with what Allah has decreed, even if that means I have to wait for my spouse in Jannah where the Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ أَعْزَبْ No one is going to be single in Jannah. But if it hasn't been decreed for you in this dunya, that doesn't make your worth any less. Asiya alayhi salam, a perfect woman, was married to the worst human being that ever walked the face of the earth, Fir'aun. Maryam alayhi salam, the greatest woman of her time and all time, never even got married. And there are many scholars in our ummah, the forerunners of our ummah, who never got married. And they used their time and their focus to become the legends of their time. In fact, the late Abdul Fatah Abu Ghudda rahimahullah, 
wrote this amazing book called Al-Ulama Al-Uzzab Al-Ladina Aathru Al-Ilm Ala Zawaj. The scholars who were single that preferred their knowledge to marriage. And he lists 20 scholars in Islamic history who never got married. The likes of Imam Al-Tabari Rahimahullah, and Imam Al-Nawawi Rahimahullah, Ibn Taymiyyah as the Makhshari, or even the famous Rabi al adawiya May Allah be pleased with them all. Now these scholars were not avoiding marriage, but they understood that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala did not decree that for them. And many scholars said that the reason why they were able to achieve what they achieve is perhaps because they didn't have those families and instead they left behind their books as their children. And look what happened, all of their students became their kin through the sacred chain of knowledge. Now that doesn't mean it's either knowledge or marriage, or it's either worship or marriage, or it's either charity or marriage, or it's either volunteering or marriage. Oh my goodness. I told you it's gonna get worse. This, what he's saying here is contradicting the whole marriage is half your deen. I remember as a Muslim, I was taught that marriage is half your faith. We are not like the people that become monks, right? We are not, we don't, we don't, we're not celibate. I mean, we're not supposed to just live single our whole lives as Muslims. We're supposed to get married and do all these things like Muhammad did. Now he's contradicting all that by saying, yeah, these scholars, they just, they were single, they did good stuff, right? They spent all the time, you know, doing all these things. Does that, you think that makes anyone feel better, Omar? All of these single Muslim men and women that are watching this, they're like, oh yeah, Imam Tabari, he wasn't married. Oh, that makes me feel so much better because his books are cool. Like, brah, like that's not making anyone feel better. None of this, what he's saying, is healthy, right? Nobody should have to hear it just wasn't meant to be. This is a problem with this fatalistic thinking that whether that God intended this for you and that this is the best it's going to be, right? Rather than making people feel empowered to change and to improve and to do things to make it happen, Instead, you're making people complacent by saying these things. Rather than trying to change the situation, rather than empower people to feel that they can make a change, it's going to make them complacent. They're just going to think, well, things suck, but there's no point improving them because the next life will be better, right? So why do I need to bother with it? Let me just, you know, be miserable for a while. I remember the story of a man at the mosque I met when I was much younger, as I think it was Ramadan. And he told me he was in a miserable marriage and his wife was this and that. And I told him, well, why don't you just move on with your life, find someone else? And he's like, no, I'm patient because in the next life, this and that. Like, it's just it's just a, a way of escaping your problems. You, you are outsourcing your problems to some imaginary fantasy land that's never going to come. Of course, they believe it's going to come. But the thing is, our need to connect is hardwired. Like, research suggests that loneliness poses serious threats to the well-being and long-term physical health of men and women. Men who are in relationships, specifically men, is pointed out in the research, they tend to be happier and live longer. And from the comments on this video, a lot of those women, a lot of the people that are struggling are Muslim women. Their choices are more limited. They can only marry Muslim men, whereas Muslims can marry Christians, Jews, Right? They have a lot more options, right? They can also marry Muslims as well. And on top of that, they can even marry multiple wives. Whereas Muslim women are stuck to marrying one, and on top of it, they have to marry a Muslim man. So now we're going to get to quite a funny story that he gives, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why it's so funny. Just wait. Let's, let's watch it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has delayed it or denied it, it still opens you up to other forms of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other chapters to your amazing story of divine decree. Notice how this whole thing is all about Allah and not about you. Oh, you, your life sucks. You don't have a partner. You get to be lonely and miserable and not have someone you can count on to take you to the doctor when you're sick or whatever. Yeah, you know, you don't need that. But there's other ways you can please Allah. I mean, doesn't that make you feel better? Never mind that your needs are not met, but hey, there's other ways you can meet, meet Allah's needs. <laughs> and it might be that that soulmate is still out there in this world. At one moment, Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu couldn't get married due to his poverty. 
and he comes to the Prophet ﷺ complaining. And the Prophet ﷺ was silent as he repeated his complaint three times. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Abu Hurairah, Jaffa al qalamu bima antalaq. O Abu Hurairah, the pen has dried with what you are going to find. And eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened that path for Abu Hurairah years later, but on his time. So when is our time? Only Allah knows. So here's this funny story. Now, now we know where this terrible advice is coming from. It's coming from Muhammad. So Abu Hurairah, young man, wants to get married. You know, he's one of the, he's actually known in Sunni Islam as the one I think that narrated more hadith than anyone else. Okay, young guy. And he followed around Muhammad like a puppy, right? And so he goes to the Prophet, you know, obviously his role model, everyone's role model. He says, hey, oh, Messenger of Allah, I want to get married, right? He's a young guy. He wants to have, you know, that part of his life. And Muhammad just ignores him. So he has to say it again. Still no answer. He has to say it a third time. Imagine communicating to the Prophet. And like, he just like ignores you until you say things three times. Imagine how, how, how difficult it would be to communicate with this man. And it's, this is like, this is like a cool thing or something. They, they promote this like, yeah, he said it three times. And then the prophet answered like, what? Not like, hold on, let me think about this. Let me get back to you. Let me ponder. Let me wait for Allah to reveal something. It's just like, he just doesn't say anything. Just like. You know, let it, let it, lets him say it multiple times over and over. Like, how is this productive? But anyways, so so first of all, one time wasn't enough. I had to say it three times. Second of all, instead of giving him advice that maybe stop memorizing everything I say and repeating it all day, go get a job, go do some business, right? Go make some money. No, it's just like. No, it's the pen has dried and the ink has lifted or whatever nonsense he's saying. Like, it's just like, and, and you know, he says it in, in Arabic to make it sound more like, <laughs> more deep. It's literally too bad for you, right? Like too bad, so sad. You ain't getting no wife. Like that's what he said, right? And how is this, how is this helping Abu Huraira, right? And then the whole point of his, this example was that Oh, well, the prophet told him, don't worry about it. And later on, he got married. Yay. Great advice from the prophet Muhammad. Just don't worry about it. Like this, if anything, this just shows you how useless this religion is, how useless the teachings are. When I watch this content, I feel so grateful that I'm no longer a part of this religion, that I don't have to listen to these people except when I'm making videos, right? And I get these videos sent to me sometimes and I need to respond to them because it's just like, I know that other people out there that they watch is like, oh my, right? And, and maybe some Muslims will watch this response and realize that this is bad advice, that this contradictory nonsense religion doesn't help anyone. These teachings are useless. These imams are useless. They're not helping the community. They're sitting on the millions of dollars of fundraising they get. And what do they do? They make these fancy videos. Fancy videos that don't help anyone, right? With with like, you know, it's highly edited, you know, professionally made, but there's no substance, right? Like what is what is the substance? And let me show you one more thing. It's just so hilarious. In the same video. Watch spark. What, what, what is this like random stuff? Imam Al-Hazm rahimahullah said, Al-Hub awaluhu hazlun wa akhiruhu jad. It's like, that love starts off as something doing? very playful and then it proceeds to something very serious. They're like unboxing t-shirts or something? Like what does this have to do with the video? It's just like a random clip they put in there. <laughs> what is this? This is the content that they're spending your hard-earned Muslim donations on. It's just, this is what you get. This is what you're getting with the money. These imams, this is what they do. They're not helping. They're not creating solutions. They're not like changing the situation. They're just telling you, yeah, don't worry about it. If anything should show you that the teachings of Islam are not helpful, this is, this is a good example. This shows you that what we have from these people 
is not good for anyone. The system itself is messed up. You can't even go and talk to women, right? If you do, you have to be in a public place. There's all these rules. You have to go to the, the father or the brother. You can't communicate with them. I mean, how many bad marriages are, are out there because you didn't get to even find out whether you're sexually compatible with your spouse before you married them? You have to just work it out because now you're stuck with them, right? So many problems are made by this religion, right? It's just, it doesn't belong in the 21st century. We are, we have moved past the need for these archaic, you know, stories of this man and this guy that followed him around and the things they said. These aren't helping anyone. These teachings don't help Muslims. Muslims are struggling. The system makes it worse, makes it harder for them to get married. Yet there's nothing they can do about it. Right? Other than leave Islam. So, if you're looking for a way out, there is a way out. You don't have to be tied down by these awful ideas. Right? Take the first step. Take the second step. Make your way out of Islam. Life gets better. It gets tougher in the short run, but in the long run, it gets better. We don't need these Imams. We don't need them to tell us to be, to accept singledom and to accept our fate. No. We can make a change. We will make a change. We'll improve ourselves. We'll find a partner. We'll live happy lives. And we don't have to be limited to this small pool of only Muslims, right? You can find love. You if you're, you can if you're a man and you're gay, you can find another man to love or a woman with another woman. If you want to marry a non-Muslim, if you want to be with anyone, you have those options. You don't have to be limited to this small pool of people that will judge you. And expect you to behave a certain way. Life gets better outside Islam. It truly does. So if you're watching this and you're in this religion, you know, I wish you well. And I hope for you the best. And to everyone who has continued to support me, thank you so much. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. The channel is doing well. I appreciate all your love and support. Thanks for watching. This is your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.